Good evening, I'm Marty McNeely for WGN News. Comic actor John Belushi died today at a rented hotel bungalow in the Hollywood Hills. Authorities say that cause of death is believed to have been a heart attack. It will be some time before we know for sure what killed 33-year-old Chris Farley, one of America's best-known combined actors and comedians. But tonight, correspondent Carol Marine of CBS News. There's a break in an unsolved murder that has haunted the tip of Cape Cod for decades. We begin with a disturbing development in the search for a young Vancouver woman in Los Angeles. Nearly three weeks after Elisa Lam went missing, a body has been found in a water tank on the roof of her hotel. Film has often been tied to death in many different ways throughout its history. It's been used as a tool to depict death and its aftermath. From early horror films to modern war movies, film has portrayed death in many different forms, often as a means of exploring the human condition or the consequences of violence and conflict. Film has also been used as a means of exploring the human experience of mortality, from existential dramas to poignant documentaries, film has explored the meaning and purpose of life in the face of death, often in ways that are both thought-provoking and emotionally effective. But what if death was not only depicted in the film, but also took it into the real world? Here I have three films that are mysteriously shrouded in death. Jaws is a classic 1975 film directed by Steven Spielberg that is widely considered one of the greatest horror movies of all time. The film centers around a massive great white shark that terrorizes a beach town and the efforts of a small group of individuals to stop the shark and save the town. Shortly after Jaws had finished filming, an unidentified murder victim was found in a sand dune in Provincetown, Massachusetts in 1974 and was nicknamed the Lady of the Dunes. The woman who was estimated to be between 25 and 40 years old was found naked, beaten, and strangled. The case remains one of the most famous and well-known unsolved murders in American history. While Jaws and the Lady of the Dunes case seem vastly different on the surface, there was one connection that was made by author Joe Hill, the son of horror master Stephen King. Joe Hill noticed an extra in Jaws that matched the police sketches of the unidentified woman. Not only that, she was wearing the same blue jeans and bandana found with the murder victim. Her remains were discovered by a teen girl walking her dog who happened upon the gruesome scene. Terry's body was badly decomposed and found lying face down on a beach towel. The victim's hands were missing, presumably removed by her killer so she could not be identified through fingerprints, and her head was nearly severed from her body. Now there has been a break in the case as of recently. In 2022, the skeletal remains were sent to Othram, an American corporation specializing in forensic genealogy, and from these, a DNA profile was generated that was used to identify distant relatives and eventually identify the victim. On October 31st, 2022, the FBI field office in Boston announced that the victim had been identified as Ruth Marie Terry. No details of any potential suspects were disclosed, nor any reason why Terry was in Massachusetts at the time of her murder. The FBI stated that Terry's identity was determined using investigative genealogy. The same method used to identify other unidentified homicides in over 150 criminals, 
including the Golden State Killer. The case is currently being investigated as a homicide by the Massachusetts police. In early 2013, guests staying at the Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles began to notice something strange. The water pressure had dropped significantly, and the water had a strange taste and discoloration. Hotel management claimed to be addressing the issue, but as the days passed, the problems persisted. It wasn't long before rumors began circulating about a young Canadian student named Alyssa Lamb who had gone missing from the hotel. As the days turned into weeks, the strange circumstances surrounding Lamb's disappearance only added to the unease that many of the hotel's guests were feeling. Then, in mid-February, maintenance workers made a gruesome discovery. Lamb's naked body was found in one of the water tanks on the hotel's roof. The hotel immediately became a crime scene with detectives and forensic specialists descending on the site to investigate. As details emerged about Lamb's behavior leading up to her disappearance, the case became even more bizarre. Surveillance footage from the hotel's elevator showed Lamb acting erratically and appearing to interact with an unseen presence just moments before she vanished. The video quickly went viral and the case captured the attention of the world. Dark Water is a horror film that was originally released in 2002, directed by Hideo Nakata and based on a short story by Koji Suzuki. The film tells the story of Yoshimi Matsubara, a recently divorced mother who moves into a rundown apartment with her young daughter, Ikuko. As they try to start a new life together, Strange things begin to happen, including a leak from the ceiling that seems to be coming from the abandoned apartment above them. As Yoshimi tries to unravel the mystery of the leak and the strange circumstances in the building, she becomes increasingly convinced that something sinister is at work. In 2005, an American remake of Dark Water was released, directed by Walter Sales and starring Jennifer Connelly in the lead role. The basic plot of the remake follows the original closely, with some changes to the setting and characters. In the remake, the story takes place in a rundown apartment building in New York City, and the lead character is named Dahlia Williams. Like Yoshimi, Dahlia is a recently divorced mother who moves into the building with her young daughter, Cecilia. As they try to start over, Dahlia begins to experience strange phenomena including a leak from the ceiling that seems to be coming from the abandoned apartment above them. As Dahlia investigates the source of the leak and the mysterious events in the building, she becomes increasingly convinced that something malevolent is at work, and she must fight to protect herself and her daughter. Now you may be asking, what does Dark Water have to do with the Alyssa Lamb tragedy? Well, there are so many, one can only say, coincidences that the film and incident share. Let's start off with the most obvious. In the film Dark Water, the apartment residents notice the water is discolored and our main character investigates only to find a girl had drowned in the apartment's water tank. That's exactly how Alyssa Lamb was found at the Cecil Hotel. Guests had complained of a foul smell and taste from the hotel's tap water only for authorities to find Alyssa Lamb's body in the hotel water tank. 19 days after she was reported missing. This grisly revelation was the stuff of nightmares. Could this be ruled a coincidence? Sure, but then it gets even weirder. The daughter in the film is named Cecilia. The hotel where Alyssa was staying at was called the Cecil Hotel. Staying with the daughter, Cecilia wears a red jacket throughout the film. In the Alyssa Lamb elevator footage, she can be seen wearing a similar jacket before her untimely death. There's other strange coincidences, but maybe that's all they are. Coincidences. 
both Darkwater and the Alyssa Lamb case have sparked discussions about the mysterious and unsettling events that can occur in urban environments. In both cases, the setting of an apartment building or hotel serves as a backdrop for eerie and unexplained events. While Darkwater is a work of fiction, the similarities between the film and the death of Alyssa Lamb highlight the enduring fascination with unsolved mysteries and unexplained events and the ways in which art and reality can intersect in unexpected ways. The film A Took, based on a novel by Canadian author Mordecai Richler, has been plagued by a tragic history of deaths. The movie was never made and the script was never produced, but the story of the film has become a legend in the film industry due to the string of misfortunes that have occurred to those who have been involved with it. The story of Atuk follows the journey of an Inuit hunter who moves to Toronto and becomes a successful advertising executive. The story is a satire of modern society and the values that define it. The script of the film was first written in the 1970s by Richler, and several attempts were made to produce the film in the following decades. The first person to die in connection with Atuk was John Belushi. He was cast in the lead and the film was written with him in mind. Belushi, who was famous for his comedic roles in films like Animal House and The Blues Brothers, was set to play Atuk but died of a drug overdose in 1982 before the film was ever made. A few years later in 1985, Sam Kennison was also cast to play the role of Atuk. Kennison was a popular comedian known for his raunchy and irreverent humor and his casting was seen as controversial. Kennison was killed in a car accident in 1992, never having had the opportunity to act in the film. In 1994, John Candy was approached and offered the role. Candy was thrilled and began to study the script. In March of that year, he also died. Candy was working in Mexico and at some point in the night of March 4th, he died of a heart attack. He was 43 years old. Candy had reportedly asked his close friend Michael O'Donohue to also read the script and perhaps join the cast. In November of that same year, he also passed away. He had a history of chronic migraines and died from a cerebral hemorrhage at 54 years old. In 1997, Chris Farley was cast as a Took. Farley, another popular comedian known for his physical humor, was excited about the role and had reportedly been working hard to lose weight in preparation for the part. However, Farley died of a drug overdose in 1997, before filming could ever begin. The last person to die in connection with A Took was Phil Hartman, who was slated to play a supporting role in the film. Hartman was a beloved actor and comedian known for his work on Saturday Night Live and The Simpsons. He was murdered by his wife in 1998, and the script for A Took was never produced. The series of tragic events that have occurred in connection with A Took have created a myth around the film, with some people believing that the script is cursed. The story of the film has become a cautionary tale in the film industry, warning filmmakers of the dangers of trying to produce a film with a dark history. Film's connection to death can seem trivial at first. But as you dig deeper, it becomes very real. It can help us to confront our own mortality, explore the impact of death on those left behind, and immortalize those who have passed away. Or it can only terrify us.